From La Serena, we rode by bus south to Viña del Mar and Valparaíso. Our second long bus ride in Chile, this was just as comfortable as the last trip up from Santiago. We passed a huge area of windmills along the way. Historically dependent on energy imports, Chile is aggressively pursuing renewable energy with goals of converting 70% of their national consumption by 2030 and achieving carbon neutrality by 2050. In January, large wildfires ravaged the area around Valparaiso and Viña del Mar. They were out by the time we arrived, but these two NASA images taken two months apart show the affected areas. And the scars were still visible from the bus. We split our time here between two neighborhoods, starting in the heart of Viña del Mar. Our street of Von Schroeder was a hub for bars, many with rooftop terraces. <laughs> Avenida Valparaiso headed east from us, a pedestrian-friendly shopping street that runs six blocks to the main Plaza Vergara. There's grocery stores, pharmacies, fruit and vegetable stands, and plenty of reasonably priced restaurants. There were also two artisanal markets for clothes and souvenirs. But a much larger temporary tent was set up a few blocks north. that had a great selection of clothes made from alpaca and other wool. Near Plaza Vergara, the Quinta Vergara Amphitheater hosts the Viña del Mar International Song Festival every February. Started in 1960, it's the oldest and largest music festival in Latin America. We were unfortunately unable to get tickets, but fortunately, everything was available on YouTube including the full concerts for Andrea Bocelli and Men of the World! The Vini Del Mar Flower Clock is a popular city landmark and close to one of Vina's many beaches. The shoreline here is gorgeous, with a wide pedestrian walk that runs along at least 13 kilometers of beach and rocky coast. And many people here love being on the water. Wolf Castle built in 1906 by a German trader and industrialist, is now a national monument and one of Vina's most striking landmarks. Unfortunately, it was closed for renovations. At the north end of Renyaka Beach, the dunes of Concon rise 100 feet above the water. The dunes are a protected nature preserve, but access is unrestricted, and you can step right off the sidewalk and start climbing. Dating to the end of the last ice age, around 12,000 years ago, the sand of the dunes was piled on top of rocky coastal cliffs by the wind and sea, so we're constantly changing and at risk of being reduced. We were surprised to see so many apartment buildings right up against the dunes, but the land area of the dunes including the protected sectors, is owned by real estate developers, so there are constant legal battles pitting conservation of the dunes against the high value of the property. We took Uber to the dunes for about six US dollars, but the regional bus system is also a great option. There are at least 40 different routes around Viña del Mar and Valparaiso, and for under 50 US cents a ride, it's a great way to get around.
The metro train is nice, but limited, only running along a single route broken into many segments. Urban Viña del Mar is very flat. Valparaiso, by contrast, is extremely hilly. The land rising immediately from the coast. Our Valparaiso apartment building was halfway up a hill, more than 400 feet above sea level. And the surrounding hills were covered with houses, some with crazy steep stairs for access. But the views from our 14th floor balcony were simply spectacular. In any time of the day, from sunrise to sunset, and into the night. Our residential neighborhood had a wide variety of housing types, including a few other apartment buildings. There were several local mini markets, vegetable stalls, bakeries, one large supermarket, and a surprisingly good takeout sushi place. It was hard to beat fresh sushi and Chilean wine with a view from our balcony. Downhill from our apartment, Portales is the main seafood market, where you can get all kinds of fruits of the sea fresh off the many fishing boats that are lined up. The fishers and visitors are outnumbered 100 to 1 by seagulls, waiting and waiting for someone to drop their next meal. A popular beach stretches away from the market with beachside restaurants that serve up fantastic seafood feasts. Founded by the Spanish in 1536, Valparaiso remained a small fishing village for three centuries. Following 1818 Chilean independence, it became the new country's primary port and naval base, kicking off the city's 19th century golden age. Land was reclaimed from the hills to the current coastline to support the massive growth of the city and port, including the landmark Plaza Sotomayor and what's now the headquarters of the Chilean Navy. Other plazas and parks were built in this period, many now with magnificently old trees, like this massive magnolia tree in Parque Italia. The city's Neo-Gothic Cathedral was an early 20th century addition following the region's elevation to a diocese under the capital Santiago. The city also grew up along Valparaiso's 42 cerros or hills, and a couple dozen ascensors were installed to help residents deal with the steep slopes. Of the 30 that were built, seven are operational and nine are under restoration. Colorful buildings can be found all around Valparaiso, but Cerro Concepcion and Cerro Alegre are particularly well known. Cerro Alegre can be accessed from Plaza Sotomayor via Ascensor El Peral. The 19th century wealth of Valparaiso's port attracted immigrants from all around, especially Europe. German Lutheran and British Anglican churches top Cerro Concepcion and the house of a wealthy Croatian merchant checkered with his homeland's red and white squares is now a museum. In 1914, the Panama Canal opened, shortening the route between the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans and Valparaiso never regained its 19th century glory. Since the late 20th century, Valparaiso has become a home for cultural wealth in the form of its many street murals. The variety and detail are pretty amazing. And some make great use of the slopes of the cerros. Enthusiasts will be kept busy for days trying to find it all.
Valparaiso is also a small cruise ship port, accommodating one ship at a time. We departed out of Valparaiso to sail south around the tip of South America. So be sure to subscribe and hit the alert bell so you don't miss out on this, one of our most exciting adventures of all.